Hi, my name is Mike. In today's video, I'm calling it Do Not Serve Sin and Its Desires. When we become believers in Christ, we do our utmost to avoid sinning. After repenting from the heart and accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour into our hearts, we will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and we will hate to do what's bad and avoid sinning as the Holy Spirit changes our heart and gives us a new heart, living upright and holy lives, pleasing to God. If you truly repent it with the heart, then you will change. It's not a drastic change overnight, but it takes time, refinement. After a while, things you used to live will be removed from your life. I used to like, uh, like I said, video games, watching movies, things like that. I'll, I'll remove all that from my life. I don't play any more games. I don't watch any more movies. I live my life to try my best to please God. Yes, I'm not perfect. And from time to time I fail. Hence, we repent, but we strive our best to avoid sinning. When we're in this form, we will fail from time to time. But we must not willingly sin. We must strive to avoid sinning. Do everything pleasing to God. We are under grace, so do not use that grace as an excuse to carry on sinning. Let me just read uh, Romans 6, 1-6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So do not serve sin and the desires of the flesh, but follow the Spirit. Uh, Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 16 to 17. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the Spirit lust after the, the, for the flesh lust after the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now carry on. But if you are led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I've told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against, against such things there is no law. And if they are Christ, have crucified the flesh with the fe affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be delirious of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So that's Galatians uh, 5 16 to 26. And also, if we read First uh, Peter two eleven, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy desire, lusts, which war against the soul. Um, and I'll do uh, Romans eight thirteen. 
For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Um, and also if we read uh, Galatians uh, 5, 13 to 14, uh, if we do that in English Standard Version, says this, If you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You should love your neighbour as yourself. So do not use your freedom to carry on sinning, we should not serve sin. As followers of Christ, we must turn away from all sin. And like I said, we're not perfect. So hence, I repent daily. And we have an advocate with the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, many pastors teach about going in a rapture. And that they teach also about one world government, about what's going on in the world. But very few teach how you should live so that you are worthy to go in the rapture. When Jesus comes, will he find you without spot and blemish? Living a godly life? Or is there one foot in the world and one foot with God? Jesus is looking for a pure and spotless church, not one with spots or, or blame, blemishes, sin on their garments. Uh, let me just read a few bits of that. Uh, the first one being uh, Ephesians 5, 23 to 27. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of, of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it might should be holy and without blemish. Is the church holy and without blemish? No, it's not. It's far from that. There are very few that are abiding in Christ's words and teachings. As it says in John 15. Uh, 1 to 7. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except you abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abide in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and is cast into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Therefore is my Father glorified that we, ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So that's uh, John 15, chap uh, chapter 15, 1 to um, 10. A true disciple of Christ does what Jesus says. John eight thirty one. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, if you continue in my word. Abide in Christ Jesus. Don't use God's grace to carry on sinning. We must be on the narrow path, which is restricted and has less freedom to move, to do the things you once enjoyed. 
but the end of the path leads to everlasting life. As many who come to Christ are still on the broad path and don't want to abide in Jesus Christ or his teachings. They want the broad road of freedom to do as they please, using God's grace, saying, I'm saved, yet carry on and do as they normally do, on the broad path to destruction, not willing to change their lifestyles to please God, having one foot in the world and one foot with God. Luke warned Christians, the Bible called it, that Jesus will spew out of his mouth. These are neither hot or cold, but lukewarm, like the church of Lacedaeans. And I can read that at Revelation 3, 14 to 19. Remember, these are believers. Luke, uh, so Revelation 3, 14 to 19. And unto the angel of the church of Lacedaeans write, These things said, Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And know it's not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayst be rich and white raiment, that thou may be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye cell, that they may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And also, uh, 1 John 2, 3-6. 1 John 2, 3-6. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that say I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keep his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we are that we are in him. He that say he abide in him or also also to walk even as he walked. And John 8.31 Um, then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Many don't want to carry their cross. It's too much of a burden. Looking back like Lot's wife to the world and the things of the world. So be hot for God not lukewarm. Run the race with endurance to attain the prize. And that's at 1 Corinthians 9.24 Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but one receive the prize, so run that you may attain. And James 4 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and do it not, to him it is a sin. So be serious with your walk with Jesus Christ. Turn away from all sin. Repent daily. And to those who think repenting daily is not necessary, just imagine you have on a white garment. And from time to time, you sin, you might have a bad thought, you might say something wrong, then your garments become spotted. So you must repent. Remember the Lord's Prayer? Anyway, I'll leave it there and say, anyone out there hasn't come to Lord Jesus, please don't wait as we're living in the last days. God bless you all. Bye-bye.